Now let's have a look at the content on your page. Now we obviously want this content to be written so that it helps search engines to find it, but in a small business environment where the aim is to get people to contact you, then you really want to have good content on your website as well. It's not like an affiliate kind of site or a site that the whole purpose of it is to, is to get people to click on Google AdWords and so it's not really written for a person because it's written so that you'll you know, find the page in Google and then click on their ads. When, it, when you're a small business, you want to actually write something good that makes people want to contact you because they like what they've seen. So what you write on the page is way more important for people than it is for search engines because we've put in the most important thing for the search engines already, which is you know, in the URL, um, in this SEO title and in the meta description. If we're able to put anything more into the page, that's really just a bonus. What we really want is good content on there that makes people stay, read it, and therefore increase the time on the site and then take some kind of action which like contacting you which indicates to Google that what they've read is good content. So I found this page here which is to do with chiropractic and pregnancy and if you I don't know if you can see that. If you just start reading this content here that's on the page, you'll see that it's pretty bad English. So it just doesn't read well. So I don't know about you, but I certainly wouldn't be, you know, convinced with some kind of content like that, that that was a good idea to contact there. And do they, yeah, this one over here has a lot more content. It's a lot better written. It actually has, you know, subheadings. And it's actually got you know a link there to a, another good website. So this is actually really good content on a website. And this is really bad. <laughs> so just say I um, for the sake of seeing what happens if we take this content and then just put it on this page we can see that there is oh it hasn't come up with a word count yet but there's a significant number of words on this page ideally what you probably want is for these titles to be in a heading two. This is the kind of thing that I would do. Make sure that there is a headings, put them in um, heading two. And then we've got a link to an external website. And because this is your main service page, you're probably not necessarily going to have a link to another page on your website, but you might if there was something in here that you'd written um, about that but what this page doesn't have within it is anything to say contact us so if it if you have a look at on this page itself it's got like a tiny contact us up there so you've read all this information you've had some great information great but there's nothing there within the page to say hey we would love to see you so probably above the interesting facts, I would be putting in something like, um, you know, if you live in, well, this is Melbourne, isn't it? If you live in Melbourne and would like more information or to meet us, 
please um, contact us on and then you want to put you know your phone number um, the email and you may even want to put the address in there I would if it was a small business that has like a physical location like this one would so you know whatever your address kind of happens to be and on the email one if you wanted to um, you could just write the word email and then you could link it to your contact us page but I would definitely make sure that it that on this services page it's got somewhere on there saying you know please contact us okay so it's actually given me a green score so it's for, for SEO now if we go and have a look at this um, advanced page analysis it's saying we haven't really used uh, keywords and because we've got chiropractic for pregnancy you might not want to put that um, as this title so let's have um, pregnancy chiropractor so because we've got so much content on there we're actually doing well 447 words even though we haven't used the keyword in an H2, we haven't got images on the page yet. Um, keyword's not in the first character. Keyword actually isn't even on the page at all. And it's considered difficult to read. But we're still doing really well because of the length of the page and the information that's on it. So by adding in these extra things, then you can potentially continue to increase your optimization. So we don't necessarily need to have Pregnancy Chiropractor Melbourne in there, but certainly if we could get, you know, by having Pregnancy Chiropractor, we are a specialist Pregnancy Chiropractor or something like that in the, in the content, then that may definitely help. That was just an example to show you, you know, something that was sort of, that could be considered quite good content. If we just... took this one and add that to the page instead we'll take the image out because the other one didn't have an image and now we see what happens we now only get a yellow score And if we have a look in the page analysis, then it's saying that the number of words is too low. And that's the main reason that it's demoted us, more so than all these other factors, even the keyword density. So keyword density is something that um, in the past people spoke about a lot, but look, Google is too clever now. It's not about the density. They can tell what a page is about, but certainly from what I've found putting it in this SEO title so that you're really telling Google what the page is about seems to be way more important than any kind of density of it that you have on the on the page itself that's just my experience now you most certainly do not want to go and copy somebody else's content and put it on your page because it will be seen as duplicate content which means that in Google's eyes it's not going to rank your page at all because the content was originally found on some other page first. So even if somebody comes along and copies your content, they shouldn't be able to outrank you with that content. And if they happen to, then there is now a tool that you can use to tell Google that somebody has taken your content and that um, scraped your content or taken your content 
and you can report them to Google for that. Now the other issue with this particular content is that if we go over to this program called Copyscape and I've put in the so this particular page Cairo Health Pregnancy Chiropractic and I've gone and put that into the um, into here and just pressed on here and you can see it's coming up saying that this content is on three other pages on the web already so it's possible that this site here copied it or maybe someone copied it from this site maybe the person who wrote it for this site also wrote it for these other sites so you need to be really careful with the contents on your site because you want it when you put a page in here you want it to come up saying nothing found so just say we go and have a look at um, this one So it's saying 18 words match 4% of the page. So see how, it, because it's got these sections that are the same, so even if you go to five or six different sites and you copy bits of the text and then you mash it all together, there's always the chance that you might not change it enough in order to for it to be seen as duplicate copy or not. So you kind of almost need to change about every third word from anything else so it's better usually to just write it from scratch um, let, let's have a look at this one and see whether we can find that anywhere Okay, so this one is also coming up showing that there's other pages that have got that same content and it's different websites. So if you are the first person to write it, you're okay, but if you've copied it from other websites, it's definitely not okay. So that's the thing to, to keep in mind. If you want to check the current pages that you have of your site now and you find that there's a lot of copies of it and you don't really know whether you wrote it first or they wrote it first, then it's a really good idea to just rewrite it and just make sure that what's on your site is actually unique content. It makes a massive difference in your ability to be able to, to rank in Google. So that's what's really important when it comes to content on the page, that firstly, it makes sense to the people who are reading it and it will actually make them want to contact you because that's what you're in business for, to get people to contact you. Um, then you want to make sure that the content um, it is something that's long enough so that Google sees it as something that it wants to rank high and obviously we've already got the SEO titles and meta descriptions which is what really helps us with the rankings and then you want to make sure that the content on there is totally unique content so content that hasn't been copied from some other site uh, if someone else copies you and you don't want them to have done that then you can report them so that's the content for your services pages. So when it comes to your blog posts, if we go to say add a new blog post, which in WordPress looks pretty much the same as, as adding a page, the only difference being is that you've got categories that you can potentially list it in. So the aim of the content on the blog post, again, is usually to inform people. Now one of the things with the Google Hummingbird update, one of the latest things with that is that um, it's been, that the whole algorithm has been rewritten so that it accommodates more of the people who are asking questions. And that's definitely something that's happening more and more and more these days 
is that people are asking more and more questions. And you probably find that you're doing it yourself. Uh, we're certainly doing it on mobile devices where it's voice activated. And we're also in America where they've just introduced um, voice activation for desktops then it's just going to become more and more and more prevalent. So you want to think about what are the questions that people are going to ask, which usually will start with why, how, where, when, what kinds of things. So just say we went back to the chiropractor idea again and we were like, right, okay, so we wanted to write a, a blog post, so maybe we'll put in why chiropractor and see if it comes up with any, oh, better spell it right. See if it comes up with any questions that people are asking. Okay, well, here we go. So, why chiropractor cracks necks? Why does chiropractor crack neck? Now, it's interesting because this is still probably going off how people have uh, written it in the past when they're typing it. But when, when people are speaking it, which is going to become more and more and more common, they're, not, they're probably most likely not going to say, why does chiropractor crack neck? They're going to say, why does my chiropractor crack my neck? Or something like that, because it's going to be speech formatted. So you probably want to think about writing the questions in how someone would speak it, more so than how someone's going to type it, because that's what we think is certainly going to be more, more of the future. But in any case... Um, let's have a look because there's going to be you know not that many people searching for these kind of terms at the moment you could probably rank for all of them as long as you wrote something similar so here's one what chiropractic adjustments do so that makes sense you could easily write a blog post about that um, so if you don't have WordPress and the WordPress SEO Yoast tool to find out these kind of things, then there is the tool Ubersuggest, which will be in the description below, which enables you to find these kind of questions that people are asking. So once you've got the question that they're asking, then you want to put that into your SEO title. You want to... This one is fine for an actual title for a blog post as well because it's, it makes sense. So we put that in the SEO title. And then you might want to put your business name and your city in there. Okay. And then you're going to put something in the meta description as well uh, that is highly relevant to whatever content that you've written on the page. So now we're going to write about what chiropractic adjustments do. And we're going to write a whole page about that. And then we're probably going to have links in the page that go back to uh, either the home page of the site or go to other service pages on the site. And we're also going to have to have some kind of information on there about having people contact you. So when you start writing blog posts as opposed to service pages where we were targeting specific cities, with questions like this, I mean, it's much harder. Someone's not going to do what chiropractic adjustments do in Melbourne because it's not relevant. So therefore, you've potentially got the opportunity to come up anywhere in the world for this kind of a question. So you want to make sure that, in the con that, that you, you know, you're writing the good content, you've got headings, and, you know, people don't like reading a whole block of text. They like it to be separated by headings. So you want to have heading, which will be, say, heading two, oh, heading two. And then you want to have content, and we don't want that to, and we want that to be paragraph. Um, and then you're going to have, you know, another heading information, another heading information. Um, and then you could have, like, some kind of contact. You could have some kind of contact us in every section if you wanted to. But given that it's a blog post, 
in a service page it probably make more sense to put the contact us in every section but in a blog post you probably have the contact us at the bottom so it would be if you live in such and such a place in such and such a country contact us to find out how we might be able to help you today or something like that because that's the whole aim is that you're trying to get people who are looking for this information and then hopefully if they're in the city that you're in Google is more likely to show them the page on your website that answers this question than somebody in a different city in a different country so for instance if you live in Melbourne and you search for what chiropractic adjustments do Google is more likely to bring you up a website that has that what chiropractic adjustments do from a business in Melbourne than from a business in America or in Perth or something like that so that's how blog posts work. The idea is to find things that people are searching for. There might only be a couple of people that are searching for these things compared to the services keyword. You know, we might be looking at somewhere between 10 to 100 as opposed to you know, hundreds to thousands. And you're just casting a wider net. So the more of these blog posts you do, the wider net you have, the more opportunity you have um, to say, hey, contact us, or you know, to have a link within this content somewhere that you know goes to a service page on your site. Again, in a blog post, the keyword density isn't particularly important. It's more about you know putting this in a heading if you can because it's actually a sentence what chiropractic adjustments do then you know it's a great idea to be able to put it in there but what you also want to look at is that's the main keyword that you might target but within your blog post you might have some other titles what chiropractic can help with what chiropractic can treat and they may be other headings within your blog post. That's what I would do anyway, is I would have you know, some kind of main question as my title and then you know, other questions as headings within the blog post. Now you might be in an industry where you know, if you put in what, where, when and why, you don't get very many things coming up. So just either think about what questions you think people might be asking in the future or kind of just go with you know whatever comes up let's see if we had what um, organic plants for instance oh well there you go um, what makes organic plants what does it Look, I think that the more that time goes on, there's just going to be more and more and more questions that people are asking. There you go. Why buy organic plants? Um, let's go where? Here you go. Loads of questions. Um, just say you had, you worked with small business owners, so you're a small business accountant. A lot of those are around um, particular areas that they're located in. Uh, what happens if we do that one? You might not want to have a page about your fees, but there's a lot of people who want to know about the fees within small business accounting. So you might write a page about small business accounting tips, small business accounting basics. Um, if you had a you know, software that you were selling, you might have small business accounting software that you offer as a product or service for your clients. So it's about kind of looking at this and going, okay, well, what can I write blog posts about? Sometimes questions could be highly relevant in some industries. At the moment, the questions may not be so relevant, but let's see if we put questions in front of that. So, okay, there's a good one. Why small business needs accounting.
um, so you might have a, a blog post about what is small business bookkeeping okay so this would be an, a site if you are looking to try and get accountant students um, let's have a look why accountant um, <laughs> okay uh, oh, we had that um, here we go what accountants do on a daily basis Okay, so it's maybe not as relevant when you come to something like that. So it's just a matter of like playing with it or with the Uber Suggest tool and just finding, okay, well, what is it that people are searching for and how can I create a blog post about the kind of things that people are actually searching for. So if you don't have WordPress and you want to find some ideas for blog posts, then you can also use the, the Google AdWords tool as well as the Uber Suggest tool. But if you um, put in um, like which chiropractor and then in the include section, you can put all these questions, which, where, why, when, what, how, so here we go. Um, what does a chiropractor do? Huge amount of searches for that. What is a chiropractor? What is chiropractic? How to become one? And then what is chiropractic care? What can they treat? So this is a simple way to find loads and loads of ideas. So you've got about 79 different ideas for blog posts there. Just put accountant. So within the keyword tool, it's really good because obviously it gives you the average amount of searches each month so you can see what the most popular ones are. So a lot of them are not people who are looking for an accountant, so we need to sort of come down until we find what is a qualified accountant, what does a CPA do. So it's just another way to find ideas. And I say just use as many different options as you've got to try and find ideas for, for blog posts. And then it's got, you know, got a whole range of things that are coming up. How to do accounting for small business, how to do small business accounting. At least 33 different ideas just around small business accounting for, for blog posts. So getting back to a blog post, the idea is that you want to obviously do what we did in the previous step, which is put in your title, put in your... want it in there, we want it in here. And then you know, we had it in there. And then we obviously have it in the meta description. You want to make sure that on the page you've got the heading and the content. Heading, content, and then you've got to contact us and probably somewhere within there you've got a link to you know, some other page on your site that is the important page. So we've got what chiropractic adjustments do. So it may be a link to your home page. It may be a link to um, a chiropractic services page on your website. 
So it's just thinking about where do you want to direct people once they get to this blog post. You know, you want them to, to contact you, but if you want them to read more information, then you obviously want them to go to a page that gives them more information. You could link to other specific blog posts if you want to, but remember whenever you do that, you're passing rank from this blog post to other pages on the site, and so we want to try and pass that to the important pages like your services pages. And then obviously you want to you know, have a relevant description in there. So that's the, the blog posts. Optimization of product pages on a small business website. Then again, it's a really similar thing. Okay, so let's say that the product is an organic um, parsley plant or something like that. It's that nobody is searching for an organic parsley plant. If you had an organic parsley plant, then it looks like how to grow an organic, how to grow parsley could probably uh, be a good blog post to write. But anyway, let's try something else that we know people will search for. Organic cereal. Okay, so we've got 30 people a month in Australia who are looking for organic cereal. So within your product page, so just say this product is some kind of organic breakfast cereal. So let's let's see, was there more people searching? Let's take out these. I want to see if people are searching for We want organic to be in there. Let's just see if we put um, organic. Breakfast cereal, whether that's higher. Okay, so lower. So you might go, okay, well, you can put whatever the product name in here is, so it might be. Um, Organic blueberry breakfast cereal. And then in the SEO title, you might put organic cereal um, Blueberry breakfast cereal. Then we're going to have organic cereal as the say maybe the keyword phrase for this product, and then we're going to write a description about it. So it's um, again, blueberry breakfast cereal by you know, whatever company it is. Um, real organic blueberries with organic oats and um, I don't know what else you might have in there organic oats and wheat germ or something
and then you might just want to put this title organic cereal you don't need cereal twice so take that out so now that's organic cereal blueberry breakfast then you obviously want to write information about this product now this if this is a product that you yourself have created then you want to make sure that the information that you're writing about the product is something that um, is unique information about this product so if other people have blueberry breakfast cereals out there you certainly don't want to copy what they've written you want to you want to write something really unique about why your organic blueberry breakfast cereal um, is so awesome then you want to obviously put it into you know whatever categories it is that you want to put it in information section you want to like write a at least 100 words, preferably 200, about the product. Um, there's also the potential with products to configure them so that they can uh, be found in Google products and that kind of thing. But that's something that you would need to talk to your developer about. That's not something that I can help you with. It might have a short description section for a product and then it might have more information sections for a product. So just write as much as you possibly can about that product and make sure it's completely unique information. If it's actually somebody else's blueberry breakfast cereal that you're selling, maybe you have a site where you sell other people's products. So let's have a look. Let's see if there is any organic breakfast cereals. Okay, let's see if this exists. Okay, so this one looks like um, some kind of a blueberry and cinnamon breakfast cereal. So this site is an information site about this product. It doesn't actually have not actually the company that's selling the product. Nature's Path. Nature's Path. Let's see if we can find them. Here we go. Here's Nature's Path. Just say you are selling this company's product on your website. What you want to make sure that you do is to have different content to what they've got which is not too hard because they have not really written very much about their product at all probably why they don't rank very high so I would recommend even on products to have at least a hundred words about the product preferably 200 words about the product that explains about you know what the product is the love and care that has gone into creating this product um, obviously the ingredients that's like really important if you can have reviews, that that will certainly help as well because it is adding more content to the page, but it's not necessarily content about the product itself, um, like you would write in a product description. Uh, so with this one, obviously, there isn't very much to copy. So you want to try and find out as much as you can. If you're selling this company's product, then you know maybe it's something that you can actually taste yourself and describe it and. Um, and talk about it. In summary, <laughs> when it comes to product pages on your website or blog pages on your website, for the content in particular, you really want to make sure that you have a heading information, heading information, heading information, and contact us and Contact us multiple times if it's a service page. Contact us at the bottom if it's a blog post because you know it, it may well be that, that someone who's found you doesn't live in your area at all. And from a blog post, you definitely want to have a link to other pages on your website. You also ideally want to have images in the pages, but we're going to go into that into the, in the next one. Now with the product pages, 
again, you do the same kind of optimization that we've done, and then you want to write the information about the product. You want it to be unique. If it's, informa if it's a product that is unique to your company, then it should be pretty easy for you to actually write information. If it's a product that's from some other company that you're selling, you need to write a good amount of information. Just writing, you know, like what this company's done is not enough. And what you can also do for any page on your website, any blog post, any product, is to come in here and check and see uh, if people have got duplicate copy to you. Now, if, um, if it's something that you've written first and other people copy it, then Google's going to rank them down lower. If for some strange reason you end up, they ended up ranking higher than you, then you can actually tell Google that they've copied your content. Uh, so that is the end of page content and again with the most important point being that you're actually writing it for the user.